Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today I've got the Yezu FT100D, as in Delta, to play with. This radio I've had for almost two years now. I've done quite a few Parks on the Air activations, so there will be some links to those videos down below where I use this radio. This is currently the only 100 watt radio. No, it's not, I can't say that. I have 200 watt radios and 100 amp watt amp in the RV with me. And this one here is the one that we're gonna play with today. So there is some pretty interesting things about this, including all of this stuff hanging off the, the backside that we've got to figure out. So let's get over to the bench and take it apart and see what we can see inside together. I really don't know what I'm looking for when I open these things up, but every time something goes, ooh, what's this? And then I can dig a little bit deeper. And maybe you might see something too. Old radios have always fascinated me because it's like walking back in history. And some of the times it's really interesting and sometimes it's really scary. And this radio came about in the early 2000s. The, I think the FT100 was in 98. And then this came out in 2000, two years later with some revisions. And those revisions are some filters. First off, it has these really weird antenna connections on the backside. Instead of having regular SO239 ports like every other radio, and I put, I put this adapter on here because it just makes sense. Instead of having just regular SO239s right on the back of the radio, it has these guys here on coax cables. And this is RG58 for both cables. And they just go straight into the radio right there. Below that, you've got a data connection, which is the six pin mini DIN style, like your old PS2 keyboards. And this is the same on a lot of radios from a lot of different brands. And I'm really happy to see that here external speaker port, power plug, accessory port, accessory, accessories, how you pronounce that, accessory, and then a key port for you, CW Fanatics, and then one more port over here. And I need to actually look up what that port is, so stand by. Well, okay, there is a switch inside for this, and this is either cat control data or a connection for your linear amplifier, your linear. So we'll have to get this thing opened up. On the front, there is a blue screen. It's a black dot matrix with a blue backlight. You have a volume and squelch or RF gain knob down here. That's, that's kind of hidden. That feels like a button. It's the, uh, the typical Yezu clarifier thing, but it also looks like it lights up. And then this one here is a select button. A, B, C, D for the different functions. Mode, which is LSB, USB, AM, FM, CW, etc. Up and down gets you up and down through the bands. And function gets you to change what these buttons do. Or if you long press, you get the deep F menu that Yezu is famous for. And then look at this. It's got a DSP button. This is one of the early stages of Yezu's DSP functionality. And it actually, it works pretty good. Uh, VFO memory. This is the power button up here. And it's usually it's a little like bluish purple color. Uh, this one seems like it's gray. Uh, VFO MR, to switch between VFO and memory mode. And then the step button, the home button, and the lock button. The step button obviously changes the steps. And then lock stops the dial from dialing. There's a couple of settings in the menu for lock, but uh, right now it is set that if you push lock, it stops the, the big VFO knob from, from doing its VFO thing. This VFO knob does not have a drag setting but you might be able to pull this rubber band off the outside and there might be some adjustments there. But it feels pretty good. All right, on the bottom, you have some built-in feet, which is pretty nice. It gets you a nice viewing angle instead of sitting this right on your desk. And then here is a hole where you can have the microphone come out the side or come out the bottom of the radio, depending on how your ergonomics are set up. And it has a detachable head to which there is a kit out there that you can find. Looks like it is from radiorework.com. There's a little circuit board there and a RJ45 jack there. And this has that spring fit, which will connect with that slide on connector in the back. And it actually is a very strong piece of 3D printed material with some mounting holes to mount in your favorite way to your favorite mounting thing. And it actually takes quite a bit of effort to get it on. There's a little snap there that snaps it in place, or you can unsnap it and get it back off the other way. So it ain't going anywhere once it is on there. 
Mine has a little blemish on the screen, but it doesn't really prevent you from getting the radio done. And I have done a couple of parks on the air activations with this, and it's a very enjoyable radio. So now what we need to do is open it up and take a look inside, because one of the big differences between the FT100 and the FT100D is that the FT100D sports some extra filters. This radio is 100 watts on HF, and it is 50 watts on two meters, and it is 20 watts on 70 centimeters. I think I might have missed a screw. Yep, okay. So there is one screw there, one screw there, and two screws on each side. Go ahead and pull the speaker off. There is a very large speaker. That's another one of the upgrades between the FT100 and the FT100D. I always look inside these things, trying to figure out what there is in here. There are a couple of those filters that we talked about there. There is a daughter board over there. This here is your filter network to make sure everything is in spec. And then there are a bunch of coax jumpers going all over the board to get from one stage of the radio to another stage. Okay, that's what you can see from the top side. Let's take a look at the bottom side. Oh, there's the bottom side. A couple of final transistors from Motorola. This one's got room for a Transistor controlled crystal oscillator sitting right over here. It looks like it wouldn't be too hard to do a power pole modification to have power poles directly on the radio because this looks like it just pops up and out of the way. And then you could easily put something in that space. Oh yeah, that could definitely be done. Yep, I could see it happening. It'd be a pretty tight kit though. For cooling, there are two big fans on the back, and they run and they do make a lot of noise while you are operating. The newer FT891 design has a like a little Venturi system going through it, but it also doesn't have two completely different radios running in it at the same time. So you've got two finals there from Motorola, and then there are two more. So you've got rectangular ones here and round ones there. So one of those has got to be for HF, and the other one's got to be for VHF UHF. Your antenna coax sports a common ground, different SWR bridges right here. So we've got an XF-118S and an XF-117C. Center frequency 11705, 2.4 kilohertz. Center frequency 11705, 500 hertz. So this one would be for sideband and this one would be for CW. While we are looking into the bottom of the radio, this is the location of the internal switch that I was talking about for this data cable here and as you can see this data cable comes down through this location in the radio comes around and goes up to the front so we want to take this purple yellow blue purple blue yellow green cable here and move it over to the empty connector there and that is for the linear connection and right now it is in the cat and data position so that's good to know is that it's in the cat and data position all right let's get her put back together Yeah, that's the bottom case. That's why it doesn't fit right. Something doesn't line up. And now that we're on the right side of the radio, we can put the right side case on the right side of the radio. And the way that I could tell is this screw hole back here didn't have anything underneath of it to screw into. Let's get the microphone plugged in. There is your microphone port right up in the front of the radio, behind the head. And then you need the head of the radio in order to be able to put it back together. I'm going to have it come out the side in my installation. And there it is. It just goes in and slides over. Let's get this thing powered on and take a look. How about an extreme close-up? Your function button, like I mentioned before, changes what these guys here do. So AB to change from VFO A to VFO B. A equals B to make VFO A and VFO B match. Split for the split function. QMB for the quick memory banks. V to M, M to V, repeat and reverse. Tone, DCS and ART. Skip, scan, DW, looks like some kind of cloning. SCH, looks like scanning of channels. I could be wrong though. IPO, ATT, attenuation, AGC, automatic gain control, noise blanker. These are your current filter selections, 6.0, 2.4, 500, and 300. 
meter to turn on different meters and tune to run the tuner function. This will work with an ATAS antenna. Pro and box, and it looks like it has some memory functions. Write, play, break, and keyer. And then there's your DNR, your DNF, and your DBP. And I guess DBP is double bandpass, looking at the icon up there. But that's a pretty nice looking display. All right, we've got a Parks on the Air activator. Woo! This is no DNR. You can hear a lot of hash in there. That quiets it right down. And then the, you can filter it so well that the signal just disappears. So there's a couple of things that you can do to mess with this DNR setting. So right now I have DNR turned on. Copy the 590 California. I'm going to give the little guys a chance. We're going to go by numbers here. With the 7, we'll sell Fox 6 here. Looking for 1. Any 1s out there? November 1, Bravo 2. I've got to 5, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, So that's menu option 17, the DN, DSP NR, and then there's the low pass filter, which goes from 1000 to 6000. That's a pretty neat little radio. This was some early DSP technology from Yezu. Like I said, this radio came out, the FT100 in 1998, and then the 100D, which is what this model is, came out in 2000, about two years later. That's almost the same time that the FT817 came out, which is probably why you can kind of see that brand language with the purple knob and the type of display and everything that this thing has on it. The 817 is pretty significantly smaller for how much the 817 and the 818 can do. The only real difference between the two radios is that this radio is 100 watts and that radio, the 817, 818 series, is not. After this radio came out, it was discontinued a couple of years later and the FT-857 came out. We'll be doing some videos on the Yezu FT-857 coming up, but we've still got a couple more things to do with this. One of the things I wanna do is figure out how to get this thing on FT-8. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you can see that. While you're waiting for that, there is another video right over here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.